Hey guys, welcome back to my garage. Hey, in this uh, video, we're going to bench test one hybrid stepper motor and drive. In other words, all we're going to do is we're going to connect one, one drive and one stepper motor to Acorn on the bench. I strongly encourage you to take things one step at a time. Don't try and wire your entire control and then fire it up and then try and troubleshoot it. It's easier if you do one subsystem at a time and work your way through things. Um, at, at the very least get, we've already done the bench test with Acorn, so at the very least get your one drive and one motor turning with Acorn so you know when you connect it to your machine it's going to move the axis. Uh, and then start working on uh, other systems. Now, when we hook up this motor and drive, I've already hooked it up, I'm just gonna go over it with you. Um, I have not hooked up the enable, I have not hooked up the alarm. They don't need to be connected to get the motor to turn. So you need to understand that. Add that stuff later. But for now, we're just going to get the motors turning and I wanna show you uh, how it's wired and just basically the setup in uh, CNC 12 just to get one motor turning. All right, so let me, uh, I'm gonna zoom you into the drive first. Use the uh, schematic that pertains to your drive or the closest that, that, that matches your drive. Um, in my case, I'm pretty much using the schematic just for the DB25 output because five volt logic drives should be connected to the DB25 and not the header. Um, so that's what these lead shine drives are. They're five volt logic. What you need to know is step in direction is step in direction. All right. Uh, all the drives that Centroid has in the wizard are there for convenience purposes. Some might need uh, negative logic, some might, might need positive logic and so forth, but the step in direction signal is a step in direction signal. All right. If your drive says use five volts, it's five volt logic then you should connect it to the DB25 and not the, the uh, Acorn uh, headers. These drives are 5 volt logic. Again, if you're not sure, post a link to the manual of your drive on the Acorn CNC users form and we'll try and help you sort it out. If you don't find a schematic in the Acorn schematic package and you need some help, post a link to the manual of the drive. Um, so many users come asking for help, but they never post the information and they expect us to go digging for it. And that's not very fair to our, our time. We're trying to help each other. So give as much information as possible. If you look over here, Pulse Plus is the step signal. And it requires a positive signal. So from the DB25, which is pin number two, step one, that little red wire is going to Pulse One. Now pulse minus, you'll see the black wire. Here's my wires. Three wires, that's all it's taking right now. Red is for my step, blue is for my direction, and black is my negative or my common. So red is going to pulse one, black is going to pulse negative, blue is going to dir plus, and black is going to dir minus. So it's just three wires, all it's taking. Now, if you have one of these drives, this is a lead shine CS-D508. I didn't monkey with any of the jumpers on here. I just hooked it up and that's it. Left it to the default settings. The feedback that the uh, motor has an encoder. See if you see that. This is what you call a hybrid stepper motor. This motor has an encoder on it, okay? When I got the cables, this was not landed. So I had done one of these previously and had a snapshot of how the encoder cable gets connected. Okay, let's go over the encoder wiring. So this is just for this, I bought these as a set from CNC for PC, the motor and the drives. So yellow is going to EB plus, green is going to EB minus, uh, black is going to EA plus, blue is going to EA minus, and red is going to VCC, white and the shield, you'll tell, you can tell there's a shrink tube around the shield, they're going to E ground. Now the motor, A plus is black, A minus is red, B plus is this uh, yellow with the green tracer, and B minus is blue. And that, that's working. I've already proven this out. So again, only three wires here. Red to pull, pull plus, black to pull minus, blue to dir plus, black 
to dir minus, and again, black is going to ground on the dB25, okay? Now, for power, I'm using a spare Acorn power supply just to, to turn this motor, 24 volts. So yellow is my plus 24 volts, and black is my ground. Here's my power supply. It's just a typical Acorn power supply, okay? Black is going to COM, yellow is going to V2. V2 on this power supply is 24 volts, and then of course, chassis ground, white is neutral, and black is line, all right? It's very simple. Plugged it in, I got power to my, to my drive here. Okay, here's our DB25. And as I previously mentioned, this is a, a, a DB25 male, it's got male pins on it to match up with uh, female pins on Acorn. You can buy these on Amazon, just search DB25 male breakout board, they're about 12 bucks. And, uh, and like I said, we're only using three wires. We've got the black on um, terminal 18, and then we've got the red, which is step on terminal two, and then we got the blue on terminal three. And that coincides with the Acorn DB25 pinout. Again, we've got red on step one, we got blue on direction, and then we've got the common uh, on pin 18. 18 through 25 are all commons, okay? Okay, I wanna let you know that the drive is powered up and I have a green LED so it's in its ready state. As you can see, I don't have CNC 12 up on the computer yet. Yet, when the motor is ready and you've got everything wired up, this rotor is locked. Can't turn it. It's energized and the rotor is locked. That's a good sign. All right. So now, let's go over uh, setting up CNC 12. All right. So let's start CNC 12. And let's go to Utility, Acorn Wizard. And like I said in the other video, the very first thing we're do doing is we're gonna start on the wizard at the top. So we click Axis Drive Type. Oh, there's a CSD508. So let's click on that. That's what we're gonna use. And let's click Load Drive. Are you sure you want to reset the configuration to drive lead shine CSD 508 defaults? Let's say yes. All right, I'm gonna go to input definitions because it's set, one of the things it did is it set the e-stop okay to normally closed. And I have an e-stop button yet, so I'm gonna turn that off. Now I'm gonna go ahead and write the settings to CNC 12 control configuration. Write these changes to the CNC control configuration, we say yes. Warning, the PLC configuration has changed. The wizard and CNC 12 must be shut down and restarted for PLC changes to apply. So we click OK. Please power cycle Acorn board and wait for the heartbeat, then press OK to continue. So let's go over to the Acorn board, and I'll show you how I'm gonna do this very carefully. All I'm gonna do is gently pull the power cord, give it a second, and I'm gonna plug it back in. Now, I don't know if you can see that, there's no heartbeat yet, but we have to wait for the heartbeat. Alternatively, you could just unplug it. We could have just unplugged that power supply Okay, we have a heartbeat now. So let's go back. So now we're gonna click OK. And now it's restarting. This is why the heartbeat has to be going before you try and restart CNC 12. Okay, we're gonna reset. And since we're on axis one and on a lathe, axis one is Z, we're going to press, we're gonna jog Z, and you probably can't see it. So there you go. It's working fine. 
So we've successfully done a bench test with one motor connected to Acorn. It was as simple as a piece of, a piece of cable with three wires and the DB25 connector. Uh, also, this is a piece of shielded cable. I recommend that you use a piece of shielded cable when you're carrying the step signals from the from the DB25 or the Acorn board to the drives. And you don't, you can see the shield here, it's not connected. So you don't want to connect this end. What you'll want to do is over here on this end, this happens to be it here, you'll want to take this to your, your chassis ground um, and that should be one point where it comes into the cabinet. And I will do that. It's just better to shield the signals with a piece of shielded cable. I believe it's just 22 gauge cable and that's, that's fine for these signals. So now that we got one motor going, let's take a look to see what this drive is set up for and we'll set it up in CNC 12. Okay, now I looked at the drive, the dip switch settings to see what it was set for and it's set for 2000 uh, steps per motor rev. So let's, uh, let's prove that out. Let's go into the utility, or let's set it up. Let's go in the utility, Acorn Wizard, and let's go to Axis Configuration, and here it says 4,000, so let's, let's change these to 2,000. 2,000. And we're gonna change it from five to one. That means if one turn of the motor will move one inch. That's what we're trying to set up here so we can visually see that this works. So when I command a, a move in the MDI of one inch, that motor should turn one revolution. Okay. Now we shut down CNC 12 for the changes to take effect. Now we'll restart CNC 12. We're going to reset. I'm going to set the home by hitting cycle start. All right, we're going to MDI. I'm going to do a G98. Cycle start. It's required in a lathe. Now we're going to do a G01C1. Let's do a feed rate of five. Now we'll hit cycle start and watch our tape. Let's see if we turn one revolution. It's going kind of slow. Could have done a faster feed rate. But yes, it does look like it turned one complete revolution. Okay, I'm going to do a G0, Z0 cycle start. And it went back. Now we're going to arrow up. Let's change the feed rate to, say, 20. Now we're going to do a cycle start and watch that tape. That tape will make one revolution. Alt-S. And that's one revolution. If you look up at the display, we commanded it to move an inch, and the motor turned one revolution. That's a quick way to see if you've got your steps per motor revolution set correctly. Okay, so we set 2,000 steps per revolution because the drive is set that way. The dip switch is defaulted to, it requires 2,000 pulses to turn that motor one rev. And then what we did, we went to the overall turns ratio and we set it to one. So by doing that, when we went into MDI, now because there's no encoder, we had to do a G98 before we commanded anything or it would not move. This is a lathe. In a mill, it's not an issue, but in a lathe, you gotta do the G98 first. Let's go back there again. Okay, let me show you the move against the G98 issue. So we go into MDI. 
we're going to go up to G0, Z0, Alt S, and it moves back, no problem. Now let's try and do the G01, Z1, F20 again, Alt S, nothing. It's, it's not moving because it doesn't see, there's no encoder input to the, to the control. So let's escape out of that. Let's do MDI again, and let's do a G98 first, G98, and we do an Alt S, so that, that's executed now. Now we're going to do the G01, Z1, F20, Alt S. And there you see it's working. Okay guys, so we successfully bench tested one motor, one drive connected to Acorn. And we set up the drive. It's dip switch settings. We're already defaulted to 2,000 pulses per revolution. So we went into the Acorn and we set the motor, rev, motor steps per rev to 2,000 to match. And then we went ahead and turn, made the overall turns ratio one so we could do a test. So by making it one, that means for one revolution of the motor, Acorn's gonna move an inch. So that's how we were able to go into the MDI and we had to command, put that G98 in first and then we did the G01 Z1 feed rate of 20 and it went ahead and we moved one inch, which is one revolution when we commanded that move. So by commanding a one inch move, we turned that motor one revolution. And that helps you, uh, at least on the bench test, know that you've got your motor steps per rev set up correctly. You will have to, obviously, if you're not direct driving a screw or if you're using pulleys, that's what the overall turns ratio is for. And we'll go over that uh, later in this build. Okay, incidentally, I'm not using the DB25 on this build. I'm going to be trying CNC for PCC86 Acorn Rev3. It does connect to the uh, headers, the Acorn headers. So the idea is you, you loosen the screws on the Acorn headers, you insert it, then you just snug the screws down on these header pins, and then uh, you use what's basically a small Ethernet patch cable from here to an interface that goes on the drives. And I'll go over that with you. Um, the, the idea is it's supposed to simplify wiring uh, make things a little bit quicker to wire when you're using the C86 Acorn Rev3. Make sure you got Rev3, the newest revision. All right, until next time, talk to you guys soon.